Hi, it's Dwyer. September the 14th, 2020. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. An upcoming fight between Effie Ajagba and Jonathan Rice. Two big heavyweights. 6'5 and taller. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now both of these fighters are committed to their styles, right? They've perfected a short range of skills. Put differently, in my parlance, both are fastball pitchers, right? Both want to land right hands. At this stage of their careers, and understand, Rice is in his 30s. Ajagba is younger. He's about 26 years old. But at this stage of their careers, neither, in my opinion, has figured out how to set up their punches using movement to create openings. That could change, but there is work to do. In my opinion, and I know I sound rough here, but we're talking about betting money. In my opinion, neither can fight off their back foot. A Ajagba is far and away the better athlete. He can jump back. He looks lighter on his feet, but he hasn't married boxing moves to his movement, right? In my opinion, he can't fight backing up. He also has a tell. Looking at film, it seems to me, and you can judge for yourself, I've put clips of him in my favorites folder. It seems to me that he likes to land his left before he throws his right hand up top, right? That's his big punch, that right up top. And understand, when I say a right, I'm not talking about a right hook. With this fighter, his best punch is a straight right hand. That's his home run punch. But he also has a decoy. Like Vitaly Klitschko, he doesn't look like he's leaning into his punches. So you can't read his leans. In other words, his punches look like arm punches, but they are not. He's able to hide his balance. His straight right, and we're talking about a job off. His straight right is an A-level punch. It can KO anyone. The question is, the million dollar question, is whether he can box well enough to get close enough to land it against a world-class top contender. At this stage of his career, in my opinion, the jury is still out. Now, Ajaba's right hand is shorter than Jonathan Rice's right hand. But understand, Rice is a little bit different. When Rice wants, he can lead with his right hand. Rice also has an interesting fight that is riveting on film. He fought Olympic gold medalist Tony Yoka. The guy who, at least according to the judges, and I would dispute this. I would dispute this decision. But according to the judges, he's the guy who beat Joe Joyce for the Olympic gold medal in 2016. Now, Yoka is interesting because Yoka, who is a counterpuncher, can move. 
He can also fight high and low. In my favorites folder are highlights of the Olympic finals between Yoka and Joe Joyce. Also there are highlights of his fight against Jonathan Rice. Now you'll notice that Rice is the stalker in the fight. He's so confident he's in against an Olympic gold medalist and he's on his front hood, foot. He believes in his right hand that much. But against a mover, he can't set it up. He doesn't have the left hook to keep an opponent in the pocket for his right hand. Right? He's too one-handed to keep an opponent from moving away. In my opinion, both of these guys are. Rice also has defensive lapses when he moves away from the pocket. Right? In the Yoka fight, you'll notice he moves away from the pocket, his hands are so low that Yoka, who's a cautious fighter, Yoka might be more cautious than Anthony Joshua. But Yoka was able to time it. So as Rice backed away with his hands low, Yoka, who's not a big puncher, was able to jump in and hit him in the face, dropping him. Rice also has severe stamina problems. When he is tired, his punch resistance can drop quickly, almost like in a video game. So in my favorites folder is his fight against Dempsey McLean, an up-on-his-toes type of mover who isn't a puncher. Now let me just say this. One has to wonder what the matchmaker for Jonathan Rice is doing, putting him in with movers. Well, the 10th round is shocking. It's literally at the end of the full fight film that I have listed. Rice looks good in the early part of the round. You would think he's going to win the round. This is like at least a minute into the round. Suddenly, he loses his stamina and gets stopped. Now, what's interesting is after the stoppage, right? He doesn't get hit that hard. It looks like his body just gives out. But Rice remains on the canvas, and you notice he is completely gassed. You realize that he's been bluffing for several rounds. That this guy has nothing left. And again, his fight against Dempsey McCain was only a 10-round fight. So, if I had to predict this one, I'm expecting a KO. Someone is going to land a right hand. Neither guy moves well enough to avoid getting hit. Both guys have been knocked down before. Kojanu, who went several rounds with Ajaba and made it into the ninth round before being stopped. And McCain, or might be McCain, who beats Rice in the tenth round, both moved better than these men. In other words, those fights went more rounds than I'm expecting this fight to go. So, I'm going to let this bet make itself. To maximize odds, I'm simply going to take the favorite, Ajaba, by KO, hedged with the loser, Rice, simply to win the fight. Right? Understand, Ajaba is seven years younger than Rice. He's the better athlete. So I like Ajaba, the favorite, by KO, hedged with the underdog, simply to win the fight. That's how I see it. I'll be shocked if it goes the distance. I want you to understand the risk involved. If it goes the distance, 
and the favorite wins the fight, you lose it all. Right? Just understand that here you're banking on either a KO or an upset. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.